wearable treasure, and lobster. edible treasure, <laughs> and lifestyle treasure. Hello there, I'm Muriel. And I'm Brian. Welcome to the channel. It was before we met. I was flying across the ocean on my concert tours, and Brian was sailing across it on his Grampian 30 sailboat. So now we're inviting you to join us. Yeah, come along as we go to some interesting places and work up Muriel's sailing skills to a point where she might consider a crossing. Maybe, maybe, and maybe work up Brian's musician skills, so maybe he'll join me on stage, or at least hanging out backstage with some of my cool musician friends. Oh, and she's got some friends. So grab a cup of coffee, grab your significant other, and join us for some great moments. Okay, to recap, we left Fire Island Inlet, used the Cape Cod Canal, and crossed over to Penobscot Bay, Maine, and hid from Hurricane Isaias on the west side of Vinyl Haven Island. Today, we'll use the Fox Island Thoroughfare, stopping in North Haven, and cross over to Stonington before anchoring out in the beautiful set of islands known as Merchant Row. We sailed out of Long Cove and had a nice current to speed us along all the way into North Haven. So it turns out this area has a, kind of an interesting history. Uh, well, beginning uh, about thousands of years ago, really, with the red paint people, followed by the Abenaki Indians. It was in 1603 that English explorer Martin Pring named the two main islands the Fox Islands, and this busy waterway between them still bears that name. In the 1880s, well-heeled rusticators, first from Boston and then from New York and Philadelphia, began summering here. In 1885, one such rusticator, Dr. William Weld, challenged the locals to a race using the tender from his yacht. He lost, but undeterred, he went and had a new tender designed and built in Salem, Massachusetts and returned to beat all comers. James Osmond Brown built four copies and thus began not only the J.O. Brown and Sons Boatyard, but also the first and oldest continually raced one design class of boat in the U.S. and possibly the world, the North Haven Dinghy. We knew none of this at the time, but managed to tie up at the dock of J.O. Brown and Sons nonetheless. Well, we stopped here in North Haven at this um, little old marina for some gas diesel, and oh, there he goes, and lobster. Ah! <laughs> Good grief. Pick him up. You can do okay. it. Okay. I'm grabbing too far back. He's going to okay. squirm. Just pick for him up. For some gas diesel and, and lobster. Dinner! Oh, he is a beauty. One of my favorite places in this area is Perry Creek, but the wind and the current are going our way towards Stonington, so we'll hit this on the way back. We're in North Haven now. We're going to follow the Fox Island Thoroughfare. This old building just east of town is so quintessentially Maine. I hope it's still here the next time we come through. Yes, there'll be a next time, I know. You can see by this big piece of kelp that the current is still in our favor. <laughs> Muriel's marveling at all the lobster pots, but I don't think she's really seen what a thick field of lobster pots looks like. This spark plug lighthouse is called Goose Rocks Light and was built in 1890 and manned until 1963. A quick five mile romp downwind and we come to the Mark Island Lighthouse, which begins the entrance towards Stonington. You can see there's an awful lot of fog offshore and I hope we can get to Stonington and over to the islands before it finds us. At least it gave us a fog boat to look at. Stonington is very much a lobster town and you notice it right away, beginning with the floating lobster pounds and then with the vast number of 
lobster boats and the very small number of private craft. We finally found a place to anchor amongst all these lobster boats and rode ashore looking for some internet and groceries. It's a cute little town, but there really is not a proper grocery store here. It's hard not to glance out at the water to make sure the boat is still where it's supposed to be. And I loved seeing the Tabor name again. And look at the cute little lobster woman. Just your size. You're like built for this thing. Look at you know, I think I have finally found the boat for me. <laughs> We took just a little too long in that town, and now the fog has moved in. We had wanted to get out to Coombs Island, but it just wasn't going to happen. We got about halfway, and it just closed in tight. We got about this far, and then just did not have the guts to try to shoot this little gap, so we turned back and anchored near the small island we had passed. Where are we, Muriel? Oh, we are anchored in, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> well, in she, her defense, she, she didn't see the chart, I did. Right. I've been here before. This is Merchant Row, south of Stonington, a great little collection of islands that are just charming. And right now we are socked in. I should have answered, we are in a rowboat. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been correct. <laughs> so we rode over to the nearest little island, which turned out to have the not-so-glamorous name of Flea Island. But between the fog and the stones still warm from the earlier sun and the osprey, it was just beautiful. While Brian trots along like a mountain goat, I'm still a bit of a tenderfoot on these coarse beaches comprised of pieces of shells with areas of snail shells that seem to gather by the thousands. And of course, picking up the occasional buoy. You can never have enough buoys to decorate your house or boardwalk with. I just love the fog. I could sit here for days like this. Wouldn't this be a great place to work on a book or a music project in Muriel's case? Oh, that goes. Lid on. So we enjoyed a lovely lobster dinner in the cockpit by candlelight and got to see the fog lift just enough to see the lights of town on one side and there was a beautiful painterly full moon on the other. We decided we needed a proper grocery store, something we didn't find in Stonington. And this little trip is essentially just like driving to the store in your car, except that this shows why sailing is so much better. I mean. How many times do you pass a schooner driving to the grocery store? It's a sad story, really, because only two of the entire Windjammer fleet are running this year. The two Rockland boats, Tabor and whatever this one is. This felt like walking into a painting here, walking down this little back street headed to the grocery store. Oh, there's a mess here. It was a lovely walk there with just myself and my camera, but a bit more of a chore coming back with 35 pounds of stuff and the camera. I'll consider myself truly old when I've got to switch to a manual windlass. So, errands done, we sailed right back over to Merchant Row, and this time found our original destination, the Coombs Islands. 
Here Brian is activating the manual drone since the real one decided to take up scuba diving. <laughs> I've got these wooden hooks on the spreaders to hold the halyards out when it anchors so you don't get that tap 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 every time a little breeze blows up. My movable panel system is crude but effective, but I would love to re-engineer it. Well, I think it's time to have a dozen. I've got onions, pepper, thyme, white wine, salt, garlic, parsley. Cold beer, that's a beautiful snack. There is a little bit of grit still, which is surprising. They've been hanging out off the stern for a couple of days now. So what I mistook for grit appears to be little mussel pearls. They're all round and smooth and sort of calcified. The lobster men work hard and get up early, and they're on their boats steaming out to their pots sometimes before first light. And uh, it can be a bit much with the wake that they throw off. Our little anchorage at Flea Island was especially tough. It seemed as though a lot of the boats passed right through there to get someplace else. Uh, this anchorage at Coombs is much better. There was a lot less of that. and. Uh, the trade-off seems to be that you suffer a bit of rock and roll early, but then they leave, they're done, and you've got the whole rest of the day of just utter tranquility and beauty and peace and quiet. It's just wonderful. So this forward position Orlock and the dinghy is uh, having a real problem that's getting worse. Thing I don't really have a full complement of tools to do this properly on board, but uh, I fashioned a piece of mahogany, which I'll attach and put a, a hole in for the oar lock, and that should at least get us home. We shall see. Look at that. First test of the new oar lock here. <laughs> Hopefully it won't split out for three strokes. <laughs> okay. I'd say it's working just fine. Yeah, it looks very elegant. Oh, I'm not yes. sure about elegant. Well, maybe not quite elegant, but it looks very functional. Ah, there you go. Functional. <laughs> The tide is dropping fast, but what a beautiful, wild little place. Alright, okay. okay. Ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoa, that's cold. Oh, don't splash your camera. <laughs> ah, like a bathtub full of ice water. <laughs> we didn't stay in long and stayed close to shore because Maine had its first ever recorded fatal shark attack just a few days earlier and uh, the water was freezing. That hot shower sure felt good afterwards. We dried off, warmed up in the sun and watched a few lovely boats go by. at our winter home we are. Yes, far from Maine but it was really fun to kind of relive those moments just in the process mm. of watching you edit this last episode together. The thing I'm reminded of most is that we really felt like we were away from COVID not thinking about COVID it was a nice break from that constant reminder. Yes it was that. like life was simple and normal again for a while. It was a cleansing. But despite the fact that we're in Nashville, Tennessee, 
Yes, Nashville has marinas too, so... We have access to some boats here as well. Yeah, I'm thinking about maybe even taking sailing lessons, Brian, here. What do you think about that? Am I not a good enough teacher? I ask well, you. Well, you know, it's just like the same thing, like, <laughs> why haven't you learned more guitar? Well, because, <laughs> because you haven't given me a lesson. <laughs> well, I think How many years? Six, maybe, seven, no lessons, not maybe, one. Well, there, well, I gave you one, so... But, you know, I think it's easier to learn from somebody else, really. You know, you get a real solid course. I'm trying not to be hurt here. <laughs> hmm. Maybe I'll take guitar lessons from somebody else. What yes, do you think of that? you could do that. <laughs> You're still my captain, don't worry. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> so there's a sailing school here that she may connect with yeah, and I'm try something. About that, yeah. Or possibly in Tampa. We're heading to Florida on a tour. Yep. In uh, a couple weeks. Right. Yeah, we'll keep you posted. And uh, thank you so much for uh, watching, and thanks to our patrons. Yes. Well, I wanted to tell them, though, before we run away, that in the meantime, here in Nashville, she's been working on her All-Star Guitar Night. Yes. And tell them what that is. Well, we've been doing this for 29 years, get guitarists from all over together to play some music uh, for and with each other. This began at the NAMM show in California? Was no, in Nashville. Oh, in Nashville. And it was the, when the Chet Atkins Appreciation Society convention was at the same time. So this year we went back to our roots and decided to have all friends of Chet that were featured. So it was mm, really... Tommy Emanuel, John Knowles. Leroy Parnell, Steve Warner, Mark Knopfler even did a cameo appearance, and Martin Wasn't Taylor it? from Scotland. Yeah, so we had just a great line of Doyle Dykes. Doyle Dykes, oh, he was awesome. Yeah. Wow, he was good. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you can still watch it. Uh, oh, it's on. Yeah, it's up online. Anyone can see it. Yeah, I uh, keep links on MurielAnderson.com/now N O W, so you can watch it <coughs> along with my upcoming regular live streams. Ah, uh, she's doing Monday Night Live. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot even of I was a special guest playing an instrument, if you yeah. can believe it. Yeah. Um, um, not very well, much. And a new release is up there. So all sorts of things. Are, uh, just go to that. Uh, that page we've got it all linked there but back to the episodes uh, the next episode coming up we will be leaving the foggy islands of Merchant Row and heading to Swans Island and reconnecting with some people we met previously mm -hmm. and uh, at the picking party yeah. they will all be playing some music I will watch yeah, they're putting together a special picking party in our honor. That's right. So, a barbecue. That's so, right. Beautiful yeah. spot. Yeah. Beautiful spot. So, we're looking forward to that. So, thanks to our patrons again, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.